Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your finished product small business tracker in the most efficient way. In this video, I'm using Go Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I will show you step by step how to prepare your spreadsheet. So if by mistake you touch a cell with a formula and see this message, simply click on the X and you will be fine. Also, please don't move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the automatization of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. So let's take a look at the setup tab. In step one, enter your currency symbol. I'm in dollar, but you could type in any other currency symbol. Then in step two, add your business information and your payment information. Basically, this information will automatically be added to the automated invoice explained later in this video. So simply type in your information. So type in your name, company name, address, etc. In step three, write your tax percentage. If you are in a country with two or more different taxes, you can make the sum of these taxes. So simply type in the number. In step four, list all your items, write the SKU, write the type of unit, for example, kilograms, meters, etc. Write the minimum inventory you want to keep for each item. And then you can write a small note if needed. A small tip, the minimum inventory is the inventory you always want to have in your business. So for example, if you have a very popular item, make sure that the inventory might be a little bit more high. If you have a not so popular item, the minimum inventory could be smaller. As for the SKU, it stands for stock keeping unit. This number basically helps you identify all your products. So let's take an example together and write chopsticks. Then let's give it a SKU, let's say 29. The unit is each, so one unit each, right? And then let's say the price is $15. And my minimum inventory is 20. Then I could write a small note. Let's say the supplier is Costco. Now let's take a look at the order overview tab. In the order overview tab, you will be able to see the yearly overview of your business performance in terms of orders. The first thing you have to do is to set up the start date. So simply type it in, then use the drop down menu to select the month. So this tab works on a 12 month period. So you can select any month to start this period. So here, as you can see, we started with April. So the end of the year is in March. If we selected January, the end of the year would be December. So right beneath the start date, you have a summary of your best seller item and the best customer for this year. Then on the side, you have a graph with the amount of money received each month and the amount on which you still are waiting for payment. And the best, of course, is to have all your invoices paid as soon as possible. Then you have a graph comparing the amount of money invoiced. So basically your revenue for the month and the amount of money you spent on restocking your inventory. In the middle of the spreadsheet, you have a very comprehensive summary of the year. You can find all the information about your invoices, how many are paid and aren't paid for each month, as well as the money value of these invoices. You also have information on your average order value, money spent on restock, your profit and your profit margin. You also have a pie chart summarizing all your inventory information. You can have more details on your inventory in other tabs that we will cover later. Then of course you have room for notes and to do's. On an important note, this tab brings data from a lot of other tabs. So it's normal that when you start using the spreadsheet, this one is completely empty. Now let's take a look at the customer tracker tab. The customer tracker tab helps you to compile all your customer information. You can list your customer names, their company, if they are doing B2B, for example, their address, the city and state or provinces, and their zip code, as well as the country. You can also fill out their email and phone numbers information. This information will be used to prepare the invoice that I will cover later in this video. 
Then on the right hand side of the sheet, the data is auto-populated and you will be able to know the number of orders from each customer, as well as the total amount in money and their last order date. So now let's take a look at the inventory tracker tab. The inventory tracker will help you to never run out of stock. So in this tab, the left hand side is totally automated. And basically the only information that you have to enter is in the reorder tracker table. So every time you need to reorder stock, you can use the drop down menu to select your product SKU. The item name is totally automated. Then enter your supplier's name, the quantity you just bought and the item cost. The order value will be calculated automatically. You can then add the order date and the order status using the drop down menu. So let's take an example together and enter a reorder uh, transaction. So let's find our chopsticks, which were item number 29. So as you can see, the name uh, just appeared. Let's say that we bought it at Costco and then we bought 20 more and the price is $1 each. So as you can see, the total is $20 because it's 20 chopsticks at $1 each. And let's say we bought it last week. And then the status is uh, ordered. And then, as I said, the left hand side is auto populated. You will be able to find the number of items sold for each SKU, the income generated, the restock cost and the number of restocks. You will also see the inventory level compared to the minimum inventory. So then the spreadsheet will then tell you if you have enough stock for an item or if you are running out of stock. It will also tell you if it is time to reorder or soon time to reorder. Then at the top of the page, you have the number of item for each status. So as you can see here, we have eight items in stock, 10 that is time to reorder, three that we will have to reorder soon, and then eight that are out of stock. So let's find our chopstick in the left hand side. So as you can see here, we have zero items sold because we did not sell any in the order tracker. As you can see, we still have zero in restock because the status is still in order. So let's change the status for arrived. So as you can see here, everything changed. And we have like 20 in restock, 20 in inventory, and as we set up earlier, 20 in minimum inventory. So the spreadsheet tells us that it's time to reorder because our minimum inventory is 20 chopsticks, right? And then we only have 20 in stock, meaning that we do not have a lot. It's basically right on the minimum inventory. Let's change the reorder tracker and say that we ordered 21 chopsticks instead of 20. So as you can see here, now it's in reorder soon status, meaning that we do not have a lot more than our minimum inventory. Let's say now that we ordered 50 chopsticks. So as you can see here, the spreadsheet thinks that we have enough in stocks since we have 50 chopsticks compared to our minimum inventory, which is 20. So now let's take a look at the order tracker tab. This tab aims for you to track all your orders. First, you want to write the invoice number. Then you will be able to select the customer from the drop down menu. The information will come from the customer tracker tab. Then you can enter the issue date and the due date. The rest of the columns are automated so you can directly scroll to the right. You can then start entering the different items of your order. Use the drop down menu to select the item, then write a description if you want to. The unit price is automated. Then you have to enter the quantity sold. Finally, the total will be calculated by itself. You can do the same process for the other items within your order. You will be then able to scroll to the left and all the information will be added automatically. In addition, you can tick the checkbox if the order is canceled before you could deliver it. Let's take an example together and you will see how easily it works. So let's enter an invoice number. Then use the drop down menu for our customer. Then let's select an issue date and a due date. This could be two different dates or it could be the exact same. The gray cells are automated, so we do not touch them. 
let's first enter information about our order. So let's say the customer ordered some chopsticks and then let's say he or she ordered five. As you can see here, the total for this item is calculated, meaning $15 times five, 25. Then let's say this customer also bought napkins. And then let's say 10. And then finally order spoons. And then let's say 10 also. Perfect. So now let's scroll to the left and see what happened here. So we can see that we have the total amount as well as the taxes that we set up earlier. It was 10%. And then we have our total amount. Once the customers pays everything, we can write the amount here. So let's say the customers pays the exact amount. We can simply type it in. And as you can see, the status changed to paid. Let's say that the customer did not pay the full amount and only paid $700. As you can see here, the status changes to partially paid and we see the due amount. Then let's say the customer paid more and paid $800. We can see that it is overpaid and also see the difference in between the amount paid and total amount. Then you can write the date on which this invoice was paid, as well as the last update you talk with the customer, for example. So now let's take a look at the invoice tab. For this tab, you simply have to select the invoice number and all the other information will appear automatically. Make sure to have filled all the information in the other tabs as well. So let's take an example together and change the invoice number. Let's find our order with the chopsticks, which was 33. As you can see here, we can see the list of items, the unit price, the quantity we entered in the order tracker, as well as the total. If we scroll down a little bit, we have the subtotal, the taxes, and all the important information. We also have payment details that comes from the setup tab. And if you want to write some notes, you could do so as well. If you want to print this invoice, you can simply click on the printing icon here change the parameter, make sure that it makes sense, and then simply click on next and then print it or save it as PDF. We won't do it in our case. If you are in Excel, it's basically the same thing. And all this information to exactly know how to print either on Google Sheets or Excel is in our readme PDF file included in your order. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your spreadsheet. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Follow Priori Digital Studio on YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.